At a recent House hearing on the U.S.-China space race, Congressman Harry Dopoulos questioned experts about the potential consequences if the U.S. were to fall behind China in the race to the moon. Watch their exchange right here. What position will the uh, communists have an advantage on as we talk about the standards of, of the future? Uh, we talked a little bit about GPS and other technologies. What are there other concerns should we somehow lose this space race? So let me first emphasize that in this context, we are in a sense in a relay of marathons. That you may win this, you may be fastest on the second leg or the third leg, but that doesn't mean that you've won. So in this context here, it's a matter of who will make it back to the moon first, but much more important will be who will be able to sustain a presence on the moon. The Artemis program is talking about uh, a manned station for one month out of the year. I suspect that the Chinese are much more thinking 12 months out of the year. If that is the case, then we are talking about who is setting the standards for not just communications and PNT, but everything from keep out zones for health and safety reasons to scheduling uh, for insertion. In essence, who, what will be the language of cislunar space travel? Will it be English or will it be Chinese? And from the moon, we potentially then go further outbound. The Chinese already talk about going to Mars, um, certainly with a sample retrieval mission, probably with human spaceflight in the out years. Again, being first matters, being there persistently matters. And that too is about setting the rules, setting the industrial standards, the business, literally the, the dollars and rimming be, as well as the law and order aspect. Thank you. And Mr. Swope, on the question of the, the International Space Station, we know about the potential of the United States bringing it back down to Earth. And, and what kind of impact might that have in this space race? Uh, thanks for the question. I think we have to think about what we're trying to achieve in low Earth orbit. There's science there, there's prestige there. Look at that transition to a commercial approach to space stations. And, and really, is NASA putting enough money on the table to make that work? I think that's the big question I'm asking in my head when I think about what happens after the ISS. I do think there are impacts to the prestige and to the science. I think determining what the level of those impacts are, it really determines what that gap is in the capabilities that we want and that we don't have. We'll still have a lot of international partners that want to work with the United States, but I don't think that looks great. If we do have a gap, we can't have people in low Earth orbit. I think that hurts our ability to go beyond low Earth orbit with human spaceflight too, and that's something that I think we need to quantify as well. What does that hurt us for Artemis if we don't have the International Space Station or something like that, that we can do experiments with people, how they live in space? There's impacts there too that I think we need to consider. For more congressional news, stay tuned to Congress Clips, and thanks for watching.